Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're going to be installing new timing chains, new tensioner arms, new timing guides, new timing tensioners, and uh, so we're doing this on my Mustang GT. Please check the video description. Uh, we'll have the full walkthrough on this from start to finish. This portion is just covering installing the timing components. Okay, so we had the relationship marked right there at the six o'clock position. You can see the timing dot, and we put a mark on that chain, and we went ahead and put one up here on the uh, gear as well. You'd have to rotate the crank several times if you want the actual master links to line up with these dots. Um, we're marking these so that we know if things move, how far they've moved. And next we're gonna bring in our cam holding tool. The part number for this particular brand was the 6477. It didn't mention that it works on the Mustang two valve, but it did. This is for the two valve engine. So basically this is what it looks like. And uh, so you're gonna unscrew it and basically it's going to clamp around the camshaft. So once you remove those two, you can see the bottom piece comes off. And so now we're going to come in here on this part of the cam, not where the lobe is. We're just going to put it underneath the camshaft, and then we're going to screw the rest of this back on top of it. Now it's very important to tighten these bolts evenly. So don't tighten one side all the way down because we want the circle to close in evenly on both sides. So what I did is I would put my finger on the back side of the tool right here and I could feel the threads. And as they just started to come out on each end, I knew that it was, that it was even at that point. I then would take my uh, socket wrench, I believe it was a half inch was the size or should be around 13 millimeter. And uh, what I did is one quarter turn at the top one, and then I went to the bottom bolt and did a, a quarter turn. You wanna do these evenly, um, otherwise it will not clamp properly. So we did quarter turns on each one, and now it started to get kind of stiff, so I actually only did like an eighth of a turn or so, uh, just enough to kind of uh, tighten it down. They recommend tightening these down to 20 foot pounds to make sure that it's tight enough. So again, just to show you how this tool works, you have it tightened down and then basically the wings over here will go to the top and the bottom of the cylinder head to keep it from rotating. And if it's tight enough, the cam shouldn't move. So I'd give it a little bit of a jiggle here to make sure that it feels like the cam is locked in place. And as an extra precaution, I took an 18 millimeter uh, wrench as I was taking off the tensioners and held the cam gear in place. So uh, I had Justin SVT hold this. And then as I took off the chain tensioners, he held the wrench to make sure that it wouldn't move and verify that it was firm enough. And sure enough, it was solid and good in place. If it wasn't, you'd have to tighten it down. Okay, you'll need two of these. You wanna put one on the driver's side and passenger side if you're removing tensioners in the whole chains as you take off the other tensioner too. Once the tensioner was removed, you could see how bad this was. It was grinding it down at an angle on the timing chain, so I'm glad I got new chains. And so it had punched through the uh, lever arm, right, the tensioner arm here. And uh, so you can see where it went through the plastic and the metal. And so there's just a gaping hole there. So I'm glad I got uh, these as well. And sometimes you don't know what you need until you're there uh, putting it back in. So uh, what we did is we swung this lever arm down, the tensioner arm down, and then we were able to remove the chain uh, okay. from Solid. the sprockets. Uh, so once we verified that the cam gear wasn't going to move, we removed the timing chain for the passenger side. And when we pulled this out, what we wanted to do was just verify that our dot to dot that we had drawn on it was in fact at each end. This is how you lay the timing chains out. You, um, each link on the far ends would be, they should be the exact opposite uh, length away. Uh, you could see on here the factory timing ones that were different colors, but you'd have to rotate the crank several times to get that to line up perfect. So making our own marks also worked. Uh, again, we just on the driver's side did the same thing, made sure that our cam holding tool was in place, removed the tensioner from that, and um, made sure that the cam wasn't going to move any. Next, we just took off the guide here, the other tensioner arm, and uh, we were able to do the same thing, just remove uh, the chain as well. So now next to each other, we have both of the old chains here, just to verify everything was good, same lengths, they came out the same way. And uh, again, the master links on those were harder to see. In fact, if it's on backwards, you won't see it until you take it off, you'll just see part numbers. Next, we took our eight millimeter 
socket here and took off this solid guide, the ones that yeah. that's bolted in. And as you can see here, there was even a piece of it that broke off. So look for this as you're doing these timing components. Uh, you can see over here, we lined it back up. You can see where it was broken. Um, that's probably from uh, them putting this tensioner on too tight, maybe with an impact and cracking the plastic. So here's our new one. We're gonna put them side by side. And here's our new chain. We're putting it side by side next to the old one to make sure that it is the same amount of links, just in case there was an error or it's the wrong chain. I then cleaned the threads really well and put some Loctite on them. And um, pay attention to these. Some of these come loose and they're not popped down into place and it's kind of odd, um, but you just gotta work it until those are in place. And now we were just moving to the passenger side. Same thing, two eight millimeter bolts that are holding these in. Again, you will need a longer bolt with a lot of these new ones, as you can see. This is what they look like side by side. And if you look, see how this one is not recessed down in and that one is recessed. So you need a longer bolt. I'll put a part number for that in the description. I went and got it at Ford. And uh, we put some Loctite on those, dried all the oil off of them, and made sure that our link was at, uh, lining back up as we put this back on to the driver's side. Okay, so make sure that the link is at the dot on the uh, down at the bottom of the crank, and also that it's at the top here, lining back up dot to dot. I found it easiest to put the chain on at the bottom of the crank and then up on the uh, underside of the cam gear. Now, as we put on the driver's side tensioner, we're going to pull the crank sprocket out a little bit. Uh, this is a tip that Repair Geek made. He had some really good videos on this as well, so check out his channel. But by pulling that uh, gear out a little bit, we'll be able to get the new tensioner in there and do it with uh, the tensioner arm. Uh, next, we're going to put our tensioner in. So remember, left refers to the driver's side. It's as if you're sitting in the vehicle. And uh, we wanted to make sure we had the correct tensioners. And as you can see, see how this one's a little bit longer up here at the top? That's a passenger side one. And then here's our driver side ones here. Okay, so they um, are a bit different. Make sure you get the right ones on the right side. Then we got some blue Loctite for our tensioner. Now here's the key. You want this to be out just a little bit. So you're doing the driver side chain first because it's on the inside. We put one bolt in. We worked that tensioner in there on the lever arm and we had the whole chain slid forward at the crank. So if you look down at the very front of the crankshaft, uh, we had it slid out. Then we pushed both of them together in a few light taps with the mallet, and that's how we were able to work this in. Yeah, see, then we were tightening down the tensioner, and we just did it one side at a time, but evenly. Uh, just make sure you're not cross-threading anything. There's some tension on here. You want to make sure that it's in place and going in smoothly. So everything seemed like it was going pretty good there for the driver's side. Next, we gently tapped the gears so that they were back in since they were you know, pushed out as we were putting in the tensioner, made sure everything was flush and lined up, and especially checked our timing dot to make sure that the master link was on the dot at the top here, and then at the crank that we were also lined up with the master link right on the timing dot. As for the passenger side, we had a little trouble getting it to line up dot to dot. We eventually had to loosen some of the uh, cam holding tools to allow it to rock back and forth a little bit. But event, as you can see, it was off there. So we did have to move the cams around a little bit with the tool loosened. And uh, then we were able to get this uh, nice and tight. Uh, so just be aware you might have to loosen those cam holding tools once everything's pretty well in place. Uh, just keep a wrench on the cam gear so you have some control on moving it. And now you can see it lines up perfectly dot to dot. And both of those master links are uh, in line there as well as uh, the one at the top of the cam gear. Next, Justin SVT did the honors of pulling the pin. Okay, so everything's in place. Please check the video description for the full repair. This is the timing chain, tensioner, lever arm portion of it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. Uh, also remember at this point, there is no oil pressure in the tensioners. So as you rotate uh, the crank, everything should line up. Um, and uh, you'd make sure at this point that you're not hitting any valves as you rotate the engine by hand, but just keep in mind that the tensioners won't have their full pressure on them right now. Also remember that as you rotate the engine that those master links will not line up with the dots every single time, uh, so don't get concerned if you go around one revolution and the timing is no longer uh, lining up dot to dot. 
Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next video.